Well, good morning, everyone. It is, as always, an uh, honor and a pleasure to be able to serve here at Berkeley Methodist United Church. So um, if you don't know who I am, I'm Pastor Craig Yoshihara, and I serve here uh, with the wonderful folks of our church community, and it's great to see you all. Um, yeah, just a couple of, of quick notes. One is today is Communion Sunday. So following our worship service, we'll have a, a short communion service. Oh, by the way, that's my dogs. Um, we'll have a short communion service. And uh, so um, we'll have like a five minute break in between where you'll be invited to go and grab something to eat and something to drink um, as we share a table together today. Uh, also, I wanted to thank everyone for your contributions to UMCOR that last week of um, getting in uh, donations uh, was surprising. And we ended up with over $1,500 that's gonna help UMCOR. And so thank you all so much for your hard work and effort and dedication to helping others in need. Um, it's, it's really an amazing uh, ministry that they do. And it's because of people like you that they're able to do it. All right. Well, also uh, need your pictures for Kids Day. To be honest, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what we're going to do with them. But uh, if you have a child of any age, so like Madhu, if you want to give us pictures of Lindsay, either as a baby or as an adult, that's totally great. Um, doesn't matter. If you have kids of any age, um, send us pictures of them. Um, especially if, if you have pictures of you with them, that would be great. And we're, you will, we're gonna use them in our Kids Day Worship um, where we have an opportunity to really celebrate youth and children, you know, who held a really special place in the heart of Jesus Christ. And so um, we hope that you will join us for that. It, it should be a, hopefully a, a very meaningful service as well as a fun one. So be there for that service on May 2nd, uh, and we'll see you then. All right. Well, as always, we are blessed to have such a wonderful variety of people who lead us in worship. And today, we get to hear from um, Cheryl, who is going to begin us with our opening prayer. So good morning, Cheryl. Good morning. Hi, everyone. It's good to see you guys. I'm one of the worship leaders. I kind of think when I think of worship, I think of music. And so really, Naomi Sanchez is really our worship leader every week. But uh, I try to do the best that I can. And so um, I um, hope that uh, you will enjoy today's service. Uh, please join me in the opening prayer. Dear Lord, You've given us an absolutely beautiful day to worship you today. You have brought us together each week to see each other, to hear your word, and to praise you for all that you have given to us. Please help all of us to open our hearts and minds to you today, this morning, and to really hear what you have to teach us. As many of our hearts are heavy with many things, Lord, the injustice and equity of our, and inequity of our country, the harming and killing of many innocent people, the knowledge that some of our brothers and sisters are struggling with their health or grieving for their loved ones, and the many people that are struggling to be fed, clothed, and sheltered during this time. Please help us to lean more heavily on you and to find hope and peace in you. Please open our hearts to be more loving and forgiving, even if we don't understand what's going on. Please add your blessings to our worship service this morning. May we all sing loudly in praise and gratitude and in gratitude to you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Cheryl. That was great. Um, Cheryl always is worried about, about doing the opening prayer and she always does a great job. So I don't know why she worries, but uh, thank you so much, Cheryl. That was wonderful. Uh, we are about to get started with our music for the day. Um, and we have an amazing pianist and worship leader in Naomi Sanchez. Uh, before Naomi uh, shares what we're going to be singing this morning, I want to remind you that if this is the first time that you've done Communion Sunday with us, we have a, a great opportunity during the communion part of worship to 
hear our favorite hymns and songs that maybe we haven't heard for a while. So if you have a favorite song or if you have a favorite hymn that you have been dying to hear, um, please put it in our chat box so that we can play it during the communion portion of our worship today. Um, yeah, it's amazing. It's like, I don't know, it's one of, it's like a open mic night, you know, at a, at a cabaret bar, but uh, somehow Naomi is able to on the fly play all this wonderful music. And Jill's able to quickly look up all the lyrics and put them up there for everyone to use. So um, please, please, please take advantage of this blessing that we have and, and share your favorite songs. So I'm gonna turn things over to Naomi. Good morning, Naomi. Good morning, Reverend Craig. Good morning, everyone. So great to see you. Um, we are just going to start off with a great praise song, and it's called Great is the Lord. And so in the spirit that Cheryl and Reverend Craig have set up for us, let's all sing together. What a great way to start our worship service today. Uh, what wonderful prayer, wonderful music. And so now we have an opportunity to together lift up our prayers and our praises to God. So if you've never done this with us before, um, we ask that you would please put in your prayer requests in the chat box if you're live with us on Zoom or in the comment section if you are um, live with us on Facebook and give us an opportunity to lift up prayers and praise uh, to God on, on your behalf. So if there are things that are on your heart or on your mind that you would like to share, um, please go ahead and start typing away and we'll lift them up. And as we lift up each prayer, um, we'll say the response together, Lord, hear our prayers. And so I'm gonna invite you to, to join me on with that as we get started together in prayer today. Pauline wanted to ask us to continue lifting up prayers for nursing home workers and folks uh, in nursing homes, essential workers, uh, and safe schools, as well as a prayer for accessible vaccinations for everyone. Uh, oh, yeah. And so for Pauline, thankfully, her mom and her aunties are doing great, and she is starting in person classes tomorrow. So, wow. I know that a lot of people are starting to, starting to go back. So 
you know, definitely, definitely be in prayer for our school communities, the teachers, the staff, the kids, all of them. Uh, Greg wanted to lift up a prayer of thanks for Lindsay and for Mike, um, who have been our interim treasurers. And for our new treasurer, uh, Hiller Consulting, uh, Charles and Teresa Hogg uh, met with Lindsay and Mike and our team and are transitioning over all of the duties of, of being treasurer. So uh, I, I think that it also is a time for us to reflect on, on how important uh, Irene had been doing all this work for so many years. Um, I, 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 we, 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 we always miss her, but even more so as we transition. So thank you to everyone who's been so faithful to our church. Uh, Janet asked if we could lift up prayers for uh, Richard and his family as Richard recovers from a major stroke. So please let's lift up Richard up in prayer. Lord, hear our prayers. Kevin asked if we could please pray, um, pray for Justin uh, and his shoulder injury. Uh, for Hopefully he'll have a speedy recovery and congratulations and Praise uh, to God. He's been um, accepted and has, and has accepted uh, going to UC Davis. So yay. Good for Justin. Awesome. Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, yeah, Bishop Sondo wanted to lift up uh, uh, prayers of thanksgiving for Irene's faithful service um, for so long. So thank you, Bishop. Lord, hear our prayers. Mary asks us uh, to please pray for the places and people who've experienced violence in their lives and in their communities. And I, I think more than ever, we are bearing witness to all those things. So um, please lift them up in prayer. Lord, hear our prayers. Oh, Lois wanted to lift up prayers for Evan. Um, I take it that he, he was stationed uh, exactly what he wanted, which was to be in San Diego. So Lord, Hear our prayers. Um, many of you know, if you remember from last week, Cassie is recovering from surgery today. And the surgery went great. So thank you everyone for, for your prayers. And so just praying for her for a quick and speedy and relatively pain-free recovery. So Lord, hear our prayers. Um, on a personal note, tomorrow I have to go in they're going to check my fistula to see if it is ready for dialysis, um, should I need it. So far, I don't have to have dialysis, but uh, they don't want to be surprised and find out that I, I can't do it um, when I need it the most. So going in tomorrow. So just uh, keep me in your prayers, please. I know I'd appreciate it. So Lord, hear our prayers. All right. Um, having shared our prayers together, Let's go ahead and lift them up to God. If you would please join me in prayer, um, let's bow our heads. Gracious God, we are so thankful for the many ways in which you touch our lives, for how you continually are able to reach into our lives in the most precious and meaningful ways that we are blessed to have family and friends surround us to give us and share with us our love, that even during these times of racial strife, of tragedy, of injustice, of pandemic, that Lord, there are still blessings all around us. And we just take this time, Lord, to stop for a moment and instead of reflecting on the things that are so wrong in the world, that we also stop for a moment and look around and see what's right. So Lord, we give our praise and thanksgiving to you for how you continue to work in the world today. Despite sometimes our efforts to mess things up, Lord, you are there. And it is through your grace and mercy and forgiveness 
that we are able to draw closer to you, to our Lord Jesus Christ. One of those ways that we draw close to you, Lord, is through prayer. And so we lift up those things this morning that we shared, but also perhaps the things that are in our hearts, the things that maybe we haven't shared aloud, but Lord, you know are on our hearts. And we share them, Lord, today, and we, we lay them down at your feet in the way that Jesus taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Thine is a kingdom, power, the glory forever. Amen. All right. Well, we are really blessed to have a number of people who are talented. Uh, Naomi's just one of, one of them. And she's going to introduce our special music for the day. So Naomi. Yes. Today we get to hear from Stephanie Suzuki and um, she will be singing and playing the guitar for us on a song that's called You Said. And this song, it's really special because it reminds us that all we need to do is ask and God has made all sorts of promises to us. And so um, the first part of the lyric is you said, ask and you will receive whatever you need. You said, pray and I'll hear from heaven and I'll heal your land. And so I wanted us all to hear the song again today because that's exactly, those are the things, you know, that is on our mind, healing for our land and making sure that we have the things that we need on a daily basis. So here is You Said, sung by Stephanie Suzuki. <laughs>
That was beautiful. That was really beautiful. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for that music. Um, this is a time in our worship service where we have the opportunity to give back to God, just a small portion of what God's already given to us. And uh, as we go into, into this time, I just want to thank you all again for the offering that you guys have given to UMCOR. And I know that it will be put to good use. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to turn things over to Cheryl as she introduces us in prayer uh, during our time of offering. So Cheryl, good morning again. Good morning. <laughs> Let's pray, please. Dear Lord, thank you for all the gifts that you've given to us. You've given, given us another day during which we can serve you and your people. You've taken excellent care of us during this pandemic. And when we have become ill, you have never left our side. You have provided us the things that we need, plenty of food, a home, and family and friends. You have brought together our community at church and blessed us with your presence here. You bring us hope for a world that is much fairer and much more loving. But most generously, Lord, you have shown us your grace and love for us in the life and sacrifice of your son. You've given us forgiveness for all the times that we have strayed from your way and have sinned against you and our brothers and sisters. Everything we have is a gift from you. As we offer our gifts to you, we give back to you from the abundance blessings you have given to us. May our gifts be acceptable in your sight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. That was beautiful if it was Kathy or Vicki. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, the Psalm, of, excuse me, the Bible verse today is taken from Psalm 130. It's called A Song of Ascents. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are filled. Feared, not filled, feared, or feared, excuse me. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in the, his word I put my hope. My soul waits for the Lord. More than watchman wait for the morning. More than watchman wait for the morning. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. That ends the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. Ah. So how good 
is good enough. That's what we've been talking about last week and, and again this week. How good do you have to be to get into heaven? You know, people in general are always looking for that bare minimum, right? What is the least amount of work I have to do to get what I want? So what's the bare minimum you have to do to get into the pearly gates? Because we believe in a good God, it's easy for us to believe in the good person theory. That all you have to do to make it into the afterlife is to be a good person. But as we talked about last week, we've come to discover that there are some problems with that theory. You know, there's not a real standard or rubric that God's given us for us to judge how good we really are. We can't really trust our own internal barometer because we make mistakes all the time. It changes from culture to culture. It changes from time to time. And the only standard that we do have is Christ, who is perfect. Now, if you think you can meet that standard, that's a pretty high bar. Too high for any average human being to meet. But Andy Stanley shared something interesting in his book about the topic. And he said, good people don't go to heaven. Forgiven people do. Good people don't go to heaven. Forgiven people do. So what does it mean to be a forgiven people? So to showcase a standard of forgiveness and to give us some kind of understanding about the forgiveness of God, we're going to read this morning from Matthew and his account of the gospel. So if you have a Bible, or if you have a Bible app on your computer that you want to follow along with, please go ahead and find Matthew 18, beginning with verse 21. Matthew 18, beginning with verse 21. Now, right before this passage that we're going to read today, together today, Matthew is recounting Jesus is telling the disciples about how to resolve conflict. And he talks about how important it is to heal those relationships. And Jesus kind of gives a step-by-step -step guideline for how to do that. He says, you know, you should confront one another personally. Uh, that doesn't work. Bring a friend to help resolve the conflict. And then, you know, if that doesn't work, then bring the matter before the, the community. And Jesus says, we must do what we can to bring healing to our relationships. But this gets Peter thinking. And every time Peter starts thinking, he starts asking questions that, that you and I probably would ask. And he says to Jesus, you know, seriously, how often do I need to forgive someone? I mean, there's a limit, right? I mean, there's a certain amount of time where I can just write them off. And that's what we're going to pick up in our story today. We're going to read from Matthew's account of the gospel as we hear what Jesus has to say to Peter. So hear now the word of the Lord. Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? I'm sure at the time Peter's thinking, seven's pretty generous, right? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since he, the man, since he was not able to pay, the master ordered he and his wife and his children and all they had to be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged. And I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. When that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. 
And the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancel all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. The word of God for the people of God and the people said, thanks be to God. Forgiveness is powerful. Think about a time when you've been forgiven when you didn't deserve it. When a simple, I'm sorry, was able to mend a relationship and it probably shouldn't have. You know, more than anything, you probably felt gratitude swelling up that it happened. Because forgiveness is powerful. It can change your life. When I was young, we used to go to um, Shai's Fish Market every week after Japanese school. And my parents would go to shop for Japanese groceries and talk to friends. But I was in it for the Star Wars cards behind the counter. You know, because we were friends with Shai and his family, uh, they, they let us kind of wander around the store. And I'd go back behind the counter every week and look to see what Star Wars cards they had in that week. I'd spend the chore money that I got every week filling up on those treasured little bits of cardboard. And then I'd borrow money from my mom to get even more packs. You know, a dollar here and a dollar there. As I got older, my, my lounge grew bigger, but the cost of everything else did too. By then I was, I was collecting comic books. I was going out with friends to the football game, playing arcade games at the bowling alley. And over and over again, I'd borrow money from my parents. By the time I graduated, I had amassed a debt of about $700. $700. My first job at Disneyland would mean I was basically working to, for free to pay back my mom, which meant that big summer trip at the end uh, that we were going to, my friends and I had planned out, probably not going to be able to go on. And I was pretty bummed, but I didn't see any way out. I mean, after all, I had promised my mom that I would pay her back. So one one day she asked me to come over to her desk and said, you know, when am I going to see that money you owe me? And I, I told her, you know, I've got about half of it, but it's probably going to take me a little while to to get the rest. And she looked up at me and said, that's okay, you keep it. Consider it a graduation gift for me and dad. I was so grateful. I mean, by every measure, my, my mom deserved to get that money. She had every reason to ask me for it and I had no reason to deny her. She forgave my debt anyway. Yeah, as a kid, seven hundred dollars seemed like a like a vast fortune of money, especially for me. But that debt was gone in an instant. And I still think about that moment and about how grateful I was for that tremendous gift. So naturally, when I read this parable from Jesus, it struck a chord with me. How similar Jesus' message was for the disciples as my mom's act of forgiveness was for me. Peter starts off by asking, how many times are we to forgive someone? Seven times? I mean, seven seems pretty generous, right? You can imagine Peter's surprise when Jesus says not seven, but 77. Not seven, but 77 times. And some translations actually say seven times 77, which... For you math whizzes out there, it's 490 times, 490 times you're supposed to forgive. 70 times seven, sorry, 490 times, 490. Jesus tells them this parable, right, of the unmerciful servant where God is like a king who forgives his 
servant's debt of 10,000 talents. And that alone sounds like a lot. I mean, if you owe $10,000 to someone, you think that was a lot of money. But instead of being grateful, instead of being merciful and forgiving like the king was to him, immediately he goes out and squeezes his fellow servant for a pittance compared to what he owed. It gets worse when you find out how much 10,000 talents is really worth. In today's dollars, 10,000 talents will be about $9 billion. $9 billion. Imagine owing anybody $9 billion. So unless you're the government, who has that kind of money? But the king forgives him just like that. Forgiven. The king knows that the servant will never be able to pay that debt. And in an act of kindness and mercy, he forgives it all. Just like God forgives us for the many, many times that we disappoint him. But instead of remembering that mercy and forgiveness, the kindness that he was just shown, he goes right around and pressers the servant, his fellow servant, who owes him like $40,000 in comparison. Now, $40,000 is a lot of money, right? But nothing when you think about the fact that he was just forgiven $9 billion. Was a man owed that money? Yes. But given the, what he was just forgiven, It just seems preposterous that the servant wouldn't give his fellow servant a break. We look like this unmerciful servant at times when we forget how much we've been forgiven and we fail to forgive the people who need it the most. We don't deserve to go to heaven. We don't deserve to go to heaven. Because that would be saying that somehow we can earn it. But as this parable points out, we have done more to separate ourselves from God than we can make up. Like the $9 billion the king forgave the servant, it really is because of God's grace and mercy and forgiveness that we have, we're able to repair this broken relationship we have with God. Without it, we'd be lost. We'd never be able to pay that debt. We tend to think that as long as we're not doing anything too bad, it's not a big deal. That, But we nickel and dime our, our sins and rack up an unpayable debt sooner than we realize. We know when we're doing something wrong because we sit there and we justify our actions to anyone who will listen. You know, with my mom, that debt hung over me like a weight. I knew I had not done right by her. I, whether the issue of money was ever even brought up, it made me feel uncomfortable and anxious every time I thought about it. Because it was such a tremendous amount of money. And I thought, oh my gosh, you know, what am I going to have to sacrifice to be able to, to make up this debt? Yet my mom was able to forgive that. God calls on us to do the same thing. To find the willingness to forgive those around us. Whether it's something small and insignificant or large and difficult, God calls on us to be a forgiving people in the same way that he's forgiven us. That doesn't mean you should allow yourself to be victimized or to be hurt in any way. But to be able to let go of the pain. To really let it go. To let go of the anger that, that can gnaw at you. It might be something really small, right? Like when your kids forget to put their socks in the hamper. Kind of drives you nuts. Or, or maybe something you complained about over and over again, like someone leaving the toilet seat up, 
when they could easily just lower it down. But maybe it's something big. It'd be an argument with your brother or sister. And be at a fight with a close friend that you're not talking to anymore. This week, I want you to challenge yourself to let go of the small stuff and pray about forgiving the big stuff. It's not easy, especially when we feel hurt or harmed. It's hard to just let go. But when we fail to forgive, we harbor bitterness and bitterness grows like a disease. And the longer it grows, the harder it is to let go. And none of us need that in our lives. When we wonder if we have the strength to do that, to forgive as God has forgiven us, remember the story that Jesus told us about the unmerciful servant. Be reminded of the grace and goodness of a God who's already forgiven you. Because remember, good people don't go to heaven. Forgiven people do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, this is the time when we get to hear one last song. And to introduce that final song, I'm going to ask Naomi to come and share a little bit about what we're going to hear. Uh, Naomi. Yes, thank you so much, Reverend Craig. Thank you so much for that, that wonderful message. And the song that we're going to close with, I think, um, you know, helps us to to be that reflection of God in forgiveness. And the song is Shine, Jesus, Shine, because when we are a reflection of God, then that's how we can share Jesus's love and God's love in this world and be a great witness. So um, we'll be singing that. But before we start that, I wanna make sure we thank Reverend Craig for all these challenging and really wonderful messages. I'm always looking forward every week because he has these really, really compelling titles. And I'm always looking forward to hear, you know, his take on it and the encouragement that he gives us. And I want to thank um, Jill and Tack for all the work they do to make sure that we're on track and very, very organized and get, you know, beautiful captions on our songs so we can sing together. And thanks so much to Cheryl. We're so thankful that she's here and really puts her heart into, you know, being a worship leader. So we appreciate that so much. And also to our, our music people today, um, it, it actually turns out that we only heard from Kathy, but we'll get to hear from Vicki next time. And, um, <laughs> but we're so thankful. You have no idea how much music they practice and record and send to me. And we just, it's so fun to program it every week so that you can enjoy. And I know you enjoy it. It's just so beautiful and really helps us set the tone for the, the service and really, um, you know, just have that moment of quiet and calm. Um, and to our singer today, Stephanie Suzuki, um, for that wonderful song. So let's close with Shine, Jesus, Shine.
love that song. Thank you so much, Naomi. Uh, Naomi often gives thanks to, for all of us, but we also want to give thanks to you for all that you do. Um, also, all, on behalf of all of us, we want to give thanks to you for being here together with us today. Uh, worship is always better in community because we get to together support one another and lift each other up. We get to talk and hear and listen to God in so many various ways. And so thanks to you, we're able to have this community with one another. So as we go forth from this place, let it be with a love of grace and forgiveness in our hearts. Let us go forth into the world and share that love and forgiveness with those around us. Help us, Lord, empower us to be the kind of people who show grace and mercy all the days of our lives. Amen. <laughs>